a playlist original. Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the Films at Home podcast today. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're following on your favorite podcast apps and listening along, I appreciate all the support. Today's guest is Elon Osborne. You may know him if you're at all into uh, home theater audio and AV type of content, AV reviews, audio reviews, speaker reviews. He has about 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. He really deserves about 300,000 because his content's great. But we're going to dive in here and go deep on home theater audio. Elon's going to talk about trends that he's seeing in this world, um, the newest technology, sound bars versus wired setups, You know how the sound bar technology has progressed. We're going to talk demo discs. We're going to give recommendations for budget tier, mid tier high tier systems if you have money to spend if you're on a budget he gives recommendations for the best brands and the best places to look and we talk all about dolby atmos and dtsx and spatial audio and all these new audio things that are coming to this world of home theater and entertainment so if you're at all interested in audio this is the episode for you elon is uh, extremely knowledgeable and formative i mean he literally named my receiver and corrected me when i got it wrong on a receiver that's like two or three years old i mean he knows his stuff so hope you guys enjoy this if you want to know everything about home theater audio you're going to get a lot out of this episode i learned a ton so will you so sit back relax enjoy this interview and i'll catch you guys at the end Here's our interview with Elon Osborne. Elon, thanks for joining today. You are um, actually pretty familiar to podcast listeners because you do the uh, intro and outro for the podcast, whether they know it or not. They've heard your <laughs> voice before on the podcast, but it's great to, to finally have you on here as a guest. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tr truth be told, um, I don't have like a natural voiceover voice, so I definitely uh doctored my voice i pitched it down just a tiny bit during that <laughs> intro i did for you so out of the good goodness of my heart i wanted to make sure that your podcast you know sounded cool when people were first starting to listen to it so i i love it i think it's super cool it's a nice it's a awesome intro and the outro is great too so thank you for doing that because i desperately yeah. desperately needed it but yeah i'm sure people uh the, the listeners definitely recognize your voice so you know, let, let's, you know, give them a little intro, you know, who, who are you? What do you, what do you do? What's your, uh, you know, YouTube channel plug away, kind of give your background on what you're doing in the, the world of content creation and, and tech stuff. All right. My name is Elon Osborne. And, uh, well, first of all, I want to say that, um, I am not like an expert expert, That's like right. a, like a technical expert, like somebody who's you know, gone to school for electrical engineering, and then that brought him into home theater and yada, yeah, yada, yada. Those guys I, will bore I do you know anyway. audio engineering. I did go to school for audio engineering, but more on the music Perfect. side of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know about music mixing and mastering and things like that. But, but even then, I'm still not like, uh, that's not my primary job whatsoever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, it was 2020. I had just gotten laid off from my job uh, working at a real estate agency. I was in their marketing department. Mm -hmm. um, so I was making their videos. He, he would always have like a monthly video he would release on YouTube, just telling you about the state of real estate in this sure. region in Northern California. And, uh, you know, uh, all the photos and stuff that you would take, uh, I would have to edit those photos because, you know, tons of photos, obviously, because everybody's needing to sell their house and they need really nice photos to make their house look appealing to people oh, who yeah. want to buy it. Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just recently did that. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally I, was, I was the one behind, uh, you know, making houses look really nice. And uh, every once in a while, I did some video tours of houses, too. So that was really fun. But, uh, but yeah, I, I tried to just make myself one of the most versatile artistic slash marketing slash whatever kind of person so that I could do video, I could do audio, I could do music if the needed, if the need arised, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I did that, but I got laid off because of COVID. 
And uh, I always knew I wanted to do a YouTube channel. I had a YouTube channel um, in place. It was already there when COVID happened, but it was just this BS, you know, nonsense, you know, skit type stuff that just didn't really catch on and nobody cared about. (laughs) Um, But then um, when I first started getting really serious about it, I actually, it was while I was still working at the marketing, in the marketing department. Um, since everyone, there was so much content being created on Netflix and Amazon Prime, HBO, whatever. Um, I was so far behind on catching up with all the shows that I wanted to watch, me and my wife. So I started listening to shows because obviously I can't watch shows at work. So I would start to listen to them on my phone, but I would turn on the audio description, which is, you know, typically for people who are blind. Yep. Um, But, uh, but that way I could follow along without actually having to see what was happening. And then I, I listened to so many that I thought, you know what, maybe I should do some reviews on if you were going to do the same thing, because you're in my position. You can't catch up with all the shows you actually want to watch. Um, so maybe maybe you can check out my review and see if it's worth even listening to. So I did a few of those. And um, again, nobody cared. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did. A, I was I'm just passionate about audio in general. I've always been that way my whole life. Um, so that's that's why I wanted to go to audio engineering school because it's mm-hmm. been a passion of mine. Um, but I, I I also grew up in a musical family. Uh, my mom was a piano teacher. My dad is a really great tenor in our church choir. Um, so I, I grew up singing in church choir, and I knew about harmonies and not necessarily like the technical side or the you know music theory. But I could do a lot by ear. That's honestly how I learned to play the piano was by ear. Um, So once upon a time, I wanted to be a film composer because along with my passion for audio, I also love movies. I have since I was a kid. Um, And I was the weird one. I was one of those weird kids who actually loved to listen to movie soundtracks when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause none of my friends did. If I ever like <laughs> tried to introduce my friends to movie soundtracks or like play movie soundtracks for them, they'd yeah. just be like, yeah, cool. Whatever. It's, it's, <laughs> that's all right. I guess. Cause like, you know, they, they would rather just hear the soundtrack with the movie as they're right. watching it, but to listen to it by itself, like that was just so boring to them, but it, you know, it, it was really cool to me. So, yeah, all these passions and stuff going through the years. Um, I also loved just sound in movies in general, too, just sound design. Um, Because I remember when I saw Jurassic Park in the theater. um, I mean, that's probably dating me on how old I am. But (laughs) um, seeing Jurassic Park in the theater... um, in the intro, there's like this Dolby Digital, some sort of intro where it's like this CD that comes and like psh, psh, all these sound effects oh, and yeah. stuff. And even that, I remember specifically just being like, oh my God, that sounded so cool. Like, I wish <laughs> I had a system that sounded that cool in my home. Um, so yeah, it's always been there, my my passion for audio. So that... Um, translated to me finally getting my own home theater system. It was just your, your real cheap Klipsch reference theater 5.1 system. Yep. Um, I finally got one of those uh, in 2020 uh, for my birthday in August. And since I already had the YouTube channel ready to go, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a review on this. Because I love audio, I love film, I love movies. Let's see what happens. Yep. Lo and behold, like compared to my silly little, you know, listen to your Netflix shows <laughs> at, while you're at work, those reviews, 
doing the review for this 5.1 Klipsch home theater system just blew all my other videos out of the water. And so then I was like, you know, then the light turned on. I'm like, hey, (laughs) this is working. I'm going to go down this avenue now. So, I mean, like I said, I already had some knowledge about home theater, but, you know, I'm a consumer just like the rest of you. Um, But I have a passion for educating people and entertaining them. So I was like, hey, you know what? Let's do this. I've got nothing better to do. I'm home. I'm living off of, you know, what the government gives me because I got laid off from my job. So let's ride this wave as long as I can. And then it just snowballed and went on from there. And I've honestly learned a ton by trying to teach people about home theater. So it's kind of this push pull kind of really cool situation that happened where, you know, I get to teach people, but at the same time, I'm like, Hey, I've, you know, never stop learning, you know, like, yeah, it, you got to have a, a passion for learning your whole life. And this is definitely taking me down an avenue. I didn't expect I was going to go down, but yeah, I I'm, I'm loving it. I love creating this content for people and, I love researching these topics. If I'm not if I'm not exactly sure how to answer a particular question or maybe a comment on one of my videos, then I'll just research it and then get back to them and sure. Yeah, it's it's been really fun. Yeah, no, I hear I hear you. That is the, the learning aspect of this is underrated because yeah, if you go back if I go back five years to when I started making videos and, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I watch some of them and I'm like, Oh my God, that guy is, that guy's <laughs> clueless. Like that guy, that guy didn't know anything compared to this guy now. And it, it is just from, from doing the research and just diving in head first and you have to mm-hmm. answer people's questions and then people, people correct you and you're like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, I was totally wrong on that one. You know, you, you do learn so much. That is an underrated part of, creating content but yeah. i mean you're you're doing this this is full time now right this is it this is the this job. is it that is correct yeah, yeah. i love yeah. it i love it so you know what are, what are you up to now i feel like you're you're reviewing you must have so many speakers and audio like receivers <laughs> and different types of equipment I mean, you got stuff coming in all the time i mean what how many yeah. videos are you up to now you've got a few hundred right yeah, over yeah, over a hundred. I know that. I'm not yeah. exactly sure, or maybe even 150 plus something yeah. like that. I was gonna say, I feel like anything that's come out in the last two years or so, like you've got it, you've got the video, and I know I go to check the stuff out. And it's been super, super helpful. Um, so you know, yeah. what are you, what are you seeing in in that in that space in the home theater space, like new trends, new formats, new equipment to keep up well, with those formats. What's kind Honestly, of hot right now? Yeah, nowadays the hot, the hot topic is room correction. Um, okay. Room correction like Odyssey or Direct Live. I personally think Direct Live is probably the best room correction software available right now. Um, but then you also have Sony's 360 real no 360 mapping or something like that. I can't remember that. So what is name. what is room correction as a as a whole? Room correction is basically you've you've got your living room or you've got your home theater space. You know, not everybody has a dedicated home theater space. Right. And that's totally understandable. It's mostly living rooms that you're going to be dealing with. Sure. But living rooms are one of the worst places to actually (laughs) have a home theater. Uh, So room correction is going to take those reflections or anomalies that shouldn't or or would make the sound worse and try and fine tuning it so that those reflections are reduced and you you've got like a more precise uh your channel separation is better and the sounds that are all surrounding you are just better um and, and not not as muddy because a lot of speakers going all at once can be a little overwhelming Mm-hmm. So, you know, room correction not only gets all of those speakers talking correctly to each other, but also the timing is correct so that, you know, you have your listening position and all the speakers around you 
are going to send audio to your ears at the correct time. Because if, if that timing is off, then it can throw things off as well. Like maybe the surround effects aren't going to be as effective mm. or maybe they're just a little bit off. Maybe they're a little late or a little too soon. So yeah, room correction just takes basically what you have and tries to make it just a lot better so that your watching movie watching experience or TV watching experience is almost like watching it in an actual theater. Um, but right now, like, you know, room correction has been around for a long time, but the new thing is active room correction and active room correction is taking it a step further. Um, kind of like active noise cancellation with certain earbuds nowadays. Yeah. Um, it takes those things into account and just takes it to another level where maybe this part of your room is causing some trouble. So active room correction will actually make live corrections to make the, I don't know, just make, make that experience even more dialed in and more mm -hmm. fine tuned. Um, so Dirac Live, like I said, they're they're one of the number one um, room correction softwares out there right now. They were the first to actually announce that they were coming out with an active version of their room correction. So it's making even the worst possible room still sound really good uh, just hmm. because it's able to mathematically figure all this stuff out. To yeah. where it doesn't matter where you have your home theater set up, it's going to sound incredible. So is this, this is software or do you need like a set, you know, set top like box that connects into your system or is it a, how, how does that all work? I guess for somebody who's, who's got to look, cause I know lots of people listening, they're in that situation. They've got their living room and everybody's always trying to just work on perfecting that. So I guess mm -hmm. what's, what is the process right now? Is it like a calibration disc or do you need a, you know, an actual electronic unit? You do need a receiver yep. um, that has, well, most receivers come with their own style or their own room correction. Um, Denon, Marantz, mm -hmm. um, they, they have a partnership with Odyssey. Um, so Odyssey room correction has always been with Denon and Marantz for many, many years. Um, yeah, that's they, what I have they on give mine. You, yeah, they give you this little calibration microphone you plug into the receiver, you put yep. it in your listening position, and then it plays all these different tones. Yeah, that's what I did with my Denon. Yeah. So now the newest Denons, like the X3800H, 4800H, um, the Marantz Cinema Line, Cinema 60, Cinema 50, um, they, they obviously have Odyssey, but now you can purchase Direct Live for an additional fee. Uh, so if you prefer Direct Live, um, that way you can actually get it, but obviously it's going to cost you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but many people are willing to pay that extra because they prefer Direct Live over Odyssey. Um, but yeah, typically um, the more expensive AVRs like your Arkham AVRs, your Anthem AVRs. Um, yeah, those are already going to have Direct Live just okay. in it already. Um, but if you are interested in Direct Live, um, Pioneer and Onkyo and Integra, they have a partnership with Direct Live. So they're probably the most inexpensive AVRs you can get that already have direct live. Um, so that's something to think about if you're wanting to get an AVR and you're really wanting to see what direct live can do for your particular situation, then yeah, maybe mm -hmm. look at Pioneer, Onkyo and Integra. Okay. And or that is, maybe, it's just software ahead. that comes right with the receiver and it's the same process sort of microphone and listening position. So you don't need any like additional 
amplifiers or anything that that connect into your AV receiver. It's all built in. Correct. Okay. So that's nice. That makes it nice and easy because I think, I mean, I have to imagine if you've got the home theater system, even in your living room, most people probably, I mean, you can go without a receiver. You can, there's way, but most people probably have the receiver. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, that's good education wise. Like I, I bet a lot of people open those up, hook up their speakers and run with it. Right. Like they don't even, you know, know about the, the, uh, even the stuff that's been built in, in past years with Denon, um, Mm -hmm. you know, that I make sure I do, I could see how you easily just skip that and the excitement to just get it set up and get it cranking. So that's good education out there. You know, I think a lot of people probably have it and don't even know they have it. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. So that's sort of, so that will help you with these new, these new audio formats, especially your Atmos, your DTS X, these things that are more advanced, that's going to be super helpful for those. Yeah, especially because you've got that many more speakers to deal with now. Yeah. So with all those speakers having to fire audio at you, you're going to need to have some sort of room correction just to dial it all in correctly. Yeah. So how do you feel about, um, you know, we talk in living room, like, what are your thoughts on how far like sound bars have come for people who are looking for a simpler, you know, simpler situation? Because the... I should say sound bars and or you can comment on wireless speakers too because I'm very curious. Traditionally it's been you need an AVR, you need wired speakers. Everything's got to be hardwired. That is that's it. Like if you don't have that it's subpar. But mm. the technology's come a long way. Sound bars have certainly come a long way from the ones I used to buy 10 years ago that were junk. Like I have a <laughs> I have a pretty solid Dolby Atmos one in my living room that that just does the living room for me. It's not my home theater, but I think it works great. So I'm mm-hmm. super curious, like, what are you seeing in that world? Because I think that is the reality for a lot of people is they're looking for that situation. They're looking for the sound bar. They're looking for wireless. They don't want wires running all over their house. Yeah, they have definitely come a long way. Um, I obviously still prefer a traditional system. Sure. Um, but I mean, I, I totally get it. I understand that not everybody's going to be you know, on the level of expertise that I am, or at least willing to put in the work to do some research. They just want to, you know, plug it in and forget about it, you know? So I totally get that side of it. Um, Samsung probably has one of the better uh, sound bars on the market right now. Their Q990B or Q990C now actually just came out. Um, That is probably one of the best on the market. The new Sony HT A9 is also very good because Sony's sound mapping technology is out of this world. Um, they've got their own thing going on that I just don't quite understand, but I've, <laughs> I, I'm a believer <laughs> in, yeah. in what they can provide. Um, but if you do get the HT A9, definitely get a subwoofer. Um, they've got a SW3 and SW5. So depending on the size of your living room, um, I would definitely have a subwoofer to go with that because the just the four surround speakers themselves, they do okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, to, to really get down deep, you really need that subwoofer to, to fill in those low frequencies. Um, so those are probably the top two right now. But um, I mean, a, a, quite, a, quite a lot of people have seen my announcement about the Nakamichi Dragon soundbar that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully this summer. I don't know. They still haven't had like a specific date that it's going to come out. But I did have the privilege to hear it in a very large hotel suite at CES in Las Vegas this year. And man... <laughs> It is it is blurring the lines between traditional home theater and soundbar because oh. it is gigantic. They spent the extra money on the really nice AMT tweeters, um, not just your regular dome tweeters like you normally see. Mm-hmm. Um, the AMT tweeters are just next level. And the surround speakers are huge. Uh, the I mean, it, it does still have to rely on bouncing audio off off the sidewalls and off the ceiling. Yep. Because that's just part of being a sound bar. 
Um, maybe eventually a sound bar will have like detachable Atmos speakers that you can mount on your ceiling. But for now, sound bars have to rely on, you know, upward firing Atmos effects. Right. But the Nakamichi sound bar, those upward firing speakers are just as big as the ones that fire audio forward. Because typically in a sound bar that most sound bars you'll get right now, the upward firing Atmos speakers are just kind of dinky. They're yeah. pretty small and, you know, they've got a fire audio probably at least six feet just to hit the ceiling and come back down. So you've got to have a lot of power to actually make that matter. But the Nakamichi, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it, it sounded like there were speakers on the ceiling because there was enough power to push that audio that high. And uh, I mean, they weren't 10 foot ceilings in this hotel suite. They were nine feet, I think. Yeah. But even then, it's it was really impressive to actually hear sounds that were supposed to be above my head be above my head. Um. And the, the rear surround speakers, the Atmos up-firing speakers, you can actually turn, uh, I think, 180 degrees, which is totally unique. No other soundbar can do that or no other surrounds can do that. Yeah. So that way, you know, just depending on how your situation is, you know, you might need to turn it a little bit to get a better f- effect either off the ceiling or off the wall or whatever. So... You know, fingers <laughs> crossed, I'm supposed to be getting one of those maybe in the next couple of months. I don't know. Nice. But as soon as I do, I, I am really looking forward to, to testing that out in my living room and to see if it really lives up to what I heard in that hotel suite. So I'm yeah. really excited about that. I mean, I think that'll be huge for people when, I mean, what, so I get, what are they thinking that's going to run though? Is that like crazy money right now? Oh, it's uh 3500, I think. Okay. Um, I honestly yeah. would have guessed maybe even a little bit higher. I mean, that's not if you compare the cost yeah. of getting a full AV the AVR is going to run you, you know, 800 to 1000 dollars alone. Speakers are going to run you another few thousand. Your subwoofer is going to run you close to a, you know, 800,000 dollars if you get a, you know, solid one. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's about that's roughly the same cost as kind of doing it all without the wire, you know. Then you got to wire it all. So, that's exactly. not bad. I was going to say five. I was going to guess five grand, um, but that's not bad. I mean, if that if that technology gets better, because that's something I deal with in my living room. I have this Dolby Atmos soundbar, but the my living room is like cathedral ceiling. So yeah. it's it's like an addition that was built on the house, but it's got, I mean, it must have, they, they slope in, but it's got 15 foot ceiling at the peak. Like, <laughs> right. I just don't feel the effect with this soundbar that I have. It sounds great for like your typical movie, but like, I know if I'm watching something up there, it's not near the experience I'm getting, you know, downstairs mm. in, in the home theater. So something like that would be a game changer um, for, I think, a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's true, though. I would be very curious to see if something of that caliber, like the Nakamichi Dragon, would still be effective even with vaulted ceilings like that. Right. Um, Because typically I don't recommend upward firing with a vaulted ceiling at all. It doesn't really work. I recommend like eight, maybe nine tops. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly 10 if you have something as powerful as the Nakamichi Dragon. But yeah, eight or nine is probably the, the highest I would say. Yeah, it definitely isn't working well. And in the slant where, where the TV and where the sound bar is, I'm probably I'm probably pretty close to that 10 foot mark there where it's actually firing off of. Um, it's mm-hmm. not out towards the peak or anything. But yeah, you just don't you just don't feel it. Like I get a decent surround effect, but you just don't feel that. And that's, that's kind of been my, my issue. And I did, I did want to ask you too, cause we talked about up firing. I mean, that's not just for sound bars, but there's a lot of surround sound, you know, full on surround sound systems out there that give you the ceiling bounce technology. That's what they use for Atmos. How, yeah. how do you feel about that versus like I have shout out to SVS, but I have their prime elevations 
for yes. for that effect. They, you know, and this is them, it's their product, they're going to say it's better. How do you, you know, how do you feel about the difference between the two between it, like a ceiling bounce and something that's maybe mounted on the front and shoots up versus something that is more direct like those those elevation speakers? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand, I mean, just like how I understand that a lot of people have to go with the sound bar for whatever particular reason. Mm -hmm. Um, I also understand that not everybody's going to be able to mount something high up on the wall or or their ceiling or even put in ceiling speakers into their ceiling. So I totally get it that upward firing is all that you can do in a particular situation, or maybe you're in an apartment and you can't, you know, just be yeah, making a sure. bunch of holes. Um, so yeah, if you're in that situation, sure. Upward firing. If you must go ahead and do it, it's going to be better than if it's just your typical ear level surrounds. Um, but I typically try and stay away from upward firing as if at all possible. Um, you know, if you really want to do it right, put the work in, maybe you have to snake some um, speaker wire behind a wall mm-hmm. and then have it come back out wherever you mount the speaker, etc. cetera. Um, speaking of SVS though, those elevation, those prime elevation speakers, they're, they don't even, they can't be put on top of a speaker to fire off the ceiling right? because they had that little base port on the back. Yeah. So they are purposely <laughs> manufactured in a way where you have to mount them up high or on a ceiling. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of SVS's little wink, wink on you probably shouldn't deal with upward firing at all, if at all possible. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it, it, yeah, I, I don't prefer it, but I understand if you have to do it, but if at all possible, you've got to have direct sound coming um, to your listening position yeah. because the whole idea behind Dolby Atmos and DTSX, Sony spatial sound mapping, all these immersive audio codecs, like it's it's based on objects moving within 3D space. Mm-hmm. So you've got to have, if you want the best timing and the best effect, it's got to be directly firing at you. Um, so that way, all these little objects flying around you are put in 3D space as, you know, as intended, as the mixing engineer intended when they were mixing the movie etc right so where do you stand on you mentioned there's atmos there's dts there's there's the spatial audio from sony i think netflix has their own version now apple has their own version i mean these are all sort of trying to do the same thing right they're trying to give you that immersive sound experience where where do you rank those do you have because i struggle and maybe i don't like I am not the audio expert, but if I put in Dolby Atmos and a DTSX, I'm like, okay, kind of, you know, <laughs> w- one in the same. I don't really, you know, I don't really have a preference for either of them. The Atmos has become more prevalent. So I guess you'd want to make sure you have equipment for that. It's kind of won that format war, which is strange because mm-hmm. DTS HD audio really won the Blu-ray audio format yeah. war versus Dolby True HD. So it kind of flipped to the 4K mm-hmm. format, but how, how do you think about that? I mean, can you tell differences between a DTSX and a Dolby Atmos? Does Sony do it better? Like, how would you rank those? And what are the differences and little nuances to them? Well, honestly, they're because everything is going to be mastered in one or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, for example, all the Jurassic World movies, I guess, I don't know, maybe Universal has some partnership with DTS. So all of those are going to be in DTSX. Yep. Um, But I mean, technically on your receiver, you can switch between the different formats. Um, But obviously you want to stick with what the disc is natively mixed in. Right. Um, 
So I honestly like all of them. Uh, I mean, I guess the only difference is probably RO3D um, because they're, at least here in the United States, RO3D isn't really that popular. Mm -hmm. But in Europe, you can actually get 4K Blu-ray discs that are mixed natively in RO3D. Now, have I heard any of those? No. Um, so most of the time when you're dealing with RO3D here in the States, you're dealing with just RO3D up mixing. So it's taking an Atmos track, it's taking a DTSX track, and it's putting their own little flair to it. Um, because RO3D was actually the first immersive audio format uh, before Atmos and DTSX even came you know, on the scene. Uh, because their whole idea is, you know, you have your ear level, you have your height level, and then you have your top level. Um, so I remember a few years when I first started my channel, I did do a comparison um, with uh, the Matrix, I think it was, uh, where I had an AVR that could do RO3D. So I listened to it. In its native Dolby Atmos track, I listened to it switching to DTS Neural X, which yep. is their own version of up mixing. And then I also switched it to RO3D. And it just seemed like RO3D provided like a more expansive soundtrack. Um, a lot of things, it seemed like whenever I played a native Dolby Atmos movie, um, and up mixed it with RO3D, it just kind of filled the space more. Um, mm -hmm. Listening to it just in Atmos, the height effects were just a little bit more sparse and didn't happen as often. But with RO3D, it kind of elevated everything. So some people might be not cool with that because <laughs> like... <laughs> No, yeah. those those sounds are supposed to be only on my ear level. They're not supposed to be up here. But at the same time, I kind of liked it because it took advantage of my height speakers more often. Yeah. So because at the time I was in a different house, um, you know, I I put in a lot of effort to put in ceiling speakers in my living room, you know, uh, Stupid me, I decided to do it in the summertime. So my <laughs> attic was balls hot <laughs> and yep. I was just profusely sweating by the time I came back down. So since I put that much effort into it, you're damn right I wanted to hear more stuff coming out of those ceiling speakers. Yeah. So switching it to RO3D definitely made stuff happen more up there. Um. So it's honestly to, to each their own. Um, I don't really think any one of them is better than the other. Um, but yeah, I, I do like RO. And if it's in DTSX, I'm just going to listen to it in DTSX. Yeah. If it's mixed in Dolby Atmos, I'm going to listen to it in Dolby Atmos. Uh, but I do know that because uh, for a while there, I, I was like really against anything claiming to be Dolby Atmos if it didn't have like some sort of height, especially if sound bars claim they had Dolby Atmos support, but it yeah. they had, they have no surround or no upward firing. But now I've kind of turned around with that because I do know that Dolby Atmos is a superior audio format compared to Dolby digital 5.1, for example. Yeah. Because, uh, Warner Brothers discs, for example, they default to Dolby Digital 5.1 and you have to go into the audio settings and switch it to Dolby Atmos if, if it's a disc that has Dolby Atmos on it. Yeah. Um, and whenever I switch it, because there's, there's been a few times where I forget to switch it <laughs> right. and I'm That's listening so to it and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. why am I listening? Why, why is off. this not like... There's no wow factor here. And then right. I remember, oh, whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I switch it to Dolby Atmos. Man, especially the bass, the, mm. there's something about Dolby Atmos that just ignites 
your base response way beyond what just regular Dolby Digital can do. So yeah, it is a superior format um, in that regard. So I, I, I do enjoy listening to things in Atmos that way. But uh, yeah, there, yeah, there's there's not really like a better format. It's just different. And I feel like it's still a little bit of a work in progress, I think. Because I feel that way too when I listen to certain things. I'm like, well... And, you know, I didn't put, I didn't put in ceiling speakers or anything, but, you know, I did invest in these speakers and I'm like, I want more. Why isn't Mm -hmm. more happening? Because I know if I go to a movie theater, more is happening. So what, what am I missing here? I feel like, you know, maybe the RO 3D just does a better job of spreading this stuff out. But I I do often have that feeling where I'm like, these height speakers are here and yes, I mean, sometimes I literally go up to them and I'm like, you know, put my ear to them. I'm like, is anything happening on it? Is something wrong? Like, right. did a wire come loose or something? Because I'm not getting anything. And, you know, sometimes that's just the mix. But some of these movies, mm-hmm. I'm like, there should be something happening there. So I do think they have a little ways to go to like, just improve it and make it better. And I think people also need to, I, I don't know, maybe they need to, maybe the mastering too, before it even gets to that point, like, some people just don't do it with that in mind. So you're going to have an Atmos track, but it yeah. like, yeah, it wasn't really mastered with this experience in mind. It was done in a different way. You know, filmmaker, or, you know, audio engineers had a certain idea of how they wanted this to sound. And so, yeah, you get Atmos, but it's like nothing's happening up there. It's almost just like a, I don't want to call it like a marketing gimmick sometimes, but it is, it's, it's sort of just the hut no, name. You're, you're not far off in, in thinking that, um, Especially now, just because Dolby Atmos has become the norm and yeah. pretty much everybody knows that name now. So it's expected now. Every new Netflix show that comes out, every new Prime video that, you know, show that comes out, HBO Max, yeah. it's expected to be mixed in Dolby Atmos. So now the work has been spread so thin that, like, these post-production companies or post- post-production facilities just don't have the manpower to put that much effort into a Dolby Atmos mix, which right. is really sad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it is. the the first ever Dolby Atmos Blu-ray was Gravity uh, with mm-hmm. Sandra Bullock, Alfonso Cuaron directed it. Um, although, That's a very rare Blu-ray now. Yes, because Extremely it is rare. only on the Diamond Lux version. Yeah. You can get Gravity Blu-ray, but if it's not the Diamond Lux version, it is not going to be in Dolby yeah, Atmos. Those go for crazy money for that Atmos track. Yes, I want one. Do you yeah, if you me, can me get too. your hands one. on one, <laughs> I will pay you. <laughs> <laughs> but like that that is still one of the best mixes for Dolby Atmos because it was the first because they had way more time mm. to to really get down to the nitty gritty and be like okay this sound needs to travel this way and this one needs to come from behind here and go over your head so like it was just you know just like anything brand new you're going to do it to 11 yeah um so yeah that's that's still one of like the prime examples of what an actual Atmos track should sound like. Um, but the, the good news is if you do have an Apple TV, uh, like Apple TV 4k or whatever, if you have one of those streaming, um, little streaming things, you can download gravity and it will have the Atmos soundtrack. I mean, granted it will be, a lossy version right of atmos but it still sounds pretty darn good (laughs) so if you're wanting if you're curious about what a really good atmos soundtrack sounds like then yeah if you have an apple tv 4k then download gravity because it's it's amazing it's yeah they, they went above and beyond on that one that's what I've heard. So either you need an Apple TV or you need about a hundred bucks and uh, a good find on eBay somewhere. Cause that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the only other way to get it. And it is crazy. Cause it was supposed to, it was supposed to come to 4k 
yeah. and was going to carry the Atmos track. And this is rumors that I've heard is that Alfonso Cuaron did not like the way that it sounded on four. Something changed or he he kept denying it for sound specifically. Oh, no way. And that's okay. that's why it never made it. But I, you know, mm-hmm. it's still floating around out there. Hopefully we'll get it someday or they'll at least update, give us an updated Blu-ray that people can access. Because I have heard that. Um, well, I say I have heard that it's a great Atmos track. I have not heard that Atmos track because <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, someday I hope to hear it. But I guess that, that begs the question, you know, what are some of the other... Or some of the other demo discs or even just demo content that you've come across if you know somebody has invested the money they've got their dolby atmos or they just want to uh you know maybe they're playing around at a magnolia and best buy or something and they could ask for you know let me let me hear how this sounds let me you know test it out beforehand what are those demo moments demo discs that people should check out um let's see uh well speaking of directors i mean yeah alfonso cuaron um he is a stickler for good sound i mean yes i would like a 4k atmos version of gravity but at the same time good for him for not letting them release the 4k version yet because if there still needs to be some tweaks done to make it as good as he wants it yeah by all means take as much time as you want because I don't want some money grab where it's just going to be some shitty Atmos track just because they want to get it out sooner than it should. Right. So yeah, good for him. Um, another director to uh, look at is uh, Denis Villeneuve. The, oh yeah, uh, one of my favorites. Yeah, Blade Runner 2049, Arrival. Um, oh gosh. What's a, what's his, oh yeah, Dune, of course. Yep. Um, those, all, all three of those are fantastic Atmos soundtracks. Um, uh, Godzilla versus Kong has an amazing Atmos soundtrack. Uh, obviously, huge bass. Uh, if yeah. you've got subwoofers, if you've got a few, if you have more than one, uh, Godzilla versus Kong is definitely a demo worthy disc. Um, but not only that, uh, it's one of the few that I've noticed because in my current uh, dedicated theater space, I do have nine ear level speakers. Um, so you've got your front sound stage, and you've got, you know, obviously your your surrounds that are directly to your sides and your surround backs. Mm-hmm. Um, but between the surrounds and the front sound stage, I have my front wides, as they call them. And uh, a lot of times, even an Atmos mix won't actually engage your front wides um, because most Atmos tracks are mixed with just seven ear level speakers in mind. Right. Um, But Godzilla versus Kong definitely engages those front wides like pretty much the entire movie. Um, So not only is it a good subwoofer workout, but it is a really good surround uh, mix as well. So yeah, that one's just fantastic all around. Um, gosh, what else? Um, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh yeah. Um, that just, gosh, I mean, <laughs> uh, what's his, what's his name? Miller, the director. Yeah. Um, George Miller, right? Yeah, George Miller. George yeah. Miller is insane, but <laughs> I love him for being so insane because not only does he have just striking visuals and just insane storylines, but he also went, you know, to 11 with the sound design as well. And it's just all over the place. And the Atmos height effects are constantly going uh or at least especially during the action scenes but yeah. but yeah that that one has a fantastic soundtrack that's a good pick that's that's i saw that in theaters and it blew me away and i think taking it home that's maybe the closest one that got me back to the theater i was like this is mixed 
very well. I'm, I'm getting, mm. uh, I'm obviously not getting the same experience. You can't beat the theatrical experience, but I was getting as close as you can get at home, I think, to matching that. That one is solid. And I, I, yeah. first of all, the movie also kicks ass too, which is always helpful when it's actually a decent <laughs> movie that sounds great. So yeah, good call yeah. on the Denis Villeneuve too. Like I'm, <laughs> there's some, there's some crappy movies that do sound great, but those are actually worth <laughs> watching and sound great. So good. Yeah. Great picks. Um, yeah. I did want to ask what, what is your current setup? We, we, I didn't even talk about that, but what do you currently have all the way around? Um, yeah, in my, my, I call it my testing theater, um, sure. cause I, I built it last year inside of a shed that used to be a marijuana shed, um, <laughs> before it's actually on my brother-in-law's property, uh, which is about a half mile down the road from where I am now. Um, so that's kind of my office, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And right now I've got, like I said, I've got nine ear level speakers. Um, all of them are from Aperion audio, uh, because they, I mean, not only do they have really good speakers, but they were one of the first to take a chance on my channel when I only had just a couple thousand subscribers. Uh, mm -hmm. just because they wanted to get their name out there more. So I've I've reviewed countless number of their of their speakers. Um, but they've also been kind enough to just send me speakers and let me hang on to them. I mean eventually they'll have to send them back. Um, but they're in no rush to get them back at the moment. So I'm just gonna keep keep them <laughs> yeah. there until they say they need them back. That's um, awesome. But, uh, but but right now I've got two of their Theatris T80 speakers as my front left and right. I've got a T80 Slim as my center channel, uh, T65s for my surrounds, um, and then I've got some Novus 6T towers as my surround backs, and then I've got also the Aperion Audio A5 height speakers as my four uh yeah two two in the front two in the back they're my four height speakers so all together yeah. oh yeah and then i've got um two aperion audio bravas 12d subwoofers in the front and then i've got an svs sb4000 behind me um so yeah a 9.3.4 <laughs> system <laughs> I was trying to do the math. That means, <laughs> so that we're talking that's, yeah, I'm, t I'm so bad at math. So 16, yeah. 16 different audio units there. That yes. is, that, <laughs> that is impressive. That is, yeah, is, y y you're in the, uh, I think you're in the 1% there of people worldwide. <laughs> that, that must sound incredible. Um, and then what, what are you yeah. using up front for like AVR and um, display and everything? Yeah, display. I've got um, a, an LG C9 OLED. Nice. You know, so obviously that's that's 2019. So that's already ancient. And, you know, good TV though. Now that yeah, it still has an incredible Great. picture. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, I hopefully soon I'm gonna be reviewing a Sony TV for the first time. Cool. Uh, just because I I've recently gotten acquainted with some uh with a couple sony reps nice um so that's that's been a an amazing experience um but yeah i've i've uh i've got an iota avx 17 preamp uh for my uh avr my receiver mm -hmm. uh, but because it's a preamp it doesn't actually have any amplifiers in it uh, it is strictly just for processing audio and switching between video sources. Um, and uh, that is hooked up to two, Aper again, Aperion Audio E7 energy amps, um, some external amps. And But I, I actually just hooked those up just a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And man, 
<laughs> They're really good. <laughs> uh, I just did a review on the E7 amp uh, last week, I think it was. Yeah. But man, I mean, because you think you think you reach a, a certain point and you're like, cool, that's my end game system. I'm done. We're good. And then something else comes along. Yeah. I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, it's it's kind of bittersweet. It's like now it sounds better, which is cool. But now I've got to like watch everything all over again to see what it sounds right. like all over again. Right. Um. So yeah, that that was that's been a, a an eye opener on just how great an external amp can actually be. But that kind of that kind of brings me to kind of circle back to what you were talking about. I mean, not all Atmos mixes are the same. This is true. But if you are looking to improve your home theater to what you currently have, um, what which AVR do you have currently? Uh, it's a Denon twenty six hundred XH. It okay. is a couple of years old at this point, but okay. it's you know it's Dolby Atmos. It can do I think eleven channels not that i have 11 but i think th- i know that's the model um it's solid but yeah you know this is where i get lost and i'm like that's what i think i'm like oh end game <laughs> got the receiver got the speakers i like what else is there and i honestly don't know yeah so uh to those i mean because because having an avr is the best way to just start your home theater journey really right because it's the it's the easiest best way to have a traditional home theater system with wires and passive speakers etc but the avr can only do so much because it has to do so many things on its own Mm -hmm. it has to process the audio it has to power your speakers it has to do the video switching back and forth etc Right. Um, so if you take away some of those jobs that the AVR has to do, then the AVR will perform better. Um, because that's why once you get beyond seven channel AVRs, they become way more expensive mm. because they have what's called pre-outs on the back, um, which which you can take, which is what external amplifiers are for. So say you've got an AVR and you've been rocking that for a couple of years. Cool. But if you want to take it to the next level, you've got to have an AVR with pre-outs because the pre-outs allow you to hook up an external amplifier to alleviate having to power your speakers, which causes it to process audio that much better. Mm -hmm. Um, Your channel separation is a lot better. Um, Just the ability to hear specific sounds coming from specific speakers and just the imaging is that much better when the powering of your speakers is done by something other than your AVR. Makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's if you want to take yours to the next. I'm actually if it's the 2600H, um, I believe that's a seven channel amplifier or a I seven channel AVR. I, I said eleven, and then as I was thinking about it, I don't think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's seven. Yeah, because most AVRs nowadays, if they have pre outs it's going to be at least nine channels Mm -hmm. Um, like your Denon X 3,800 H 4,800 H your Onkyo RZ 50, your pioneer LX 505. um, Those will have pre outs so that um, I mean, if you want to take it one step at a time, sure. Get a receiver, rock that for a while. Uh, but then if you want to move to something bigger, you don't have to get another AVR just yet. You can, as long as it has pre-outs, then start to invest in external amplifiers. Um, because then it'll sound that much better. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then once, and obviously probably somewhere in there, you probably want to invest in better speakers as well. Um, mm-hmm. Speakers that can handle more power. Because if you're just doing the AVR, then speakers that are rated to handle watts up to like 100, 120, 150, those are perfect for if you're just going to be using the AVR. If you're going to be using the AVR in tandem with external amplifiers, then that's probably when you want to get speakers that can handle at least 150 watts per channel, more like you know, 150 to 200, possibly even 300 watts, you know, but obviously those kind of speakers are going to be a lot more expensive. Yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm learning here. I'm trying to figure SVS prime. My whole system is SVS prime speakers, yeah. towers, elevation center, you know, bookshelves mm-hmm. for the surrounds. It's all that. I don't yeah. even know where they land on that. Um, in terms yeah. The prime output. speakers, they are the entry level speakers for SVS. So um, I think one step above that is the prime pinnacle. And then yep. one step beyond that is their ultra series. Ultras. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, where, that's the goal eventually is I, I have what I have now. And like you said, I mean, I still recognize that it's, I'm very lucky and it's better than a lot of people are able to have. So true. I do love it and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to turn my whole room 90 degrees and open it Ooh. up a little bit. Um, cause I have it sort of in this smaller space now and I'm going to open it up and use the full length of the room. This room that I'm in right now, if you're watching the video, like yeah. we'll go the whole length of the room. I'll get my desk and my, my day job stuff out of here hmm. and, you know, do, do a big screen projector and like, actually I want to do like in, in wall, in ceiling speakers, do the whole nine. So that's that's yeah. the goal of it. I'm thinking kids kids got to go. They got to get a little bit older and got to get them out of freaking. If I get them out of diapers, I can afford these speakers. Um, right. And afford diapers some other are stuff, so expensive. <laughs> ridiculous. Ah. But I also I also don't want them. Like I'm just like no, nobody's. I'm not going to get enough use out of it yet. But when they're a little bit older. Yeah, I want to come down here and just like blow them away and like have a movie night and like they'll appreciate it and they'll also be old enough to not just like rip wires out of the wall or like yeah. break things. So I'm waiting to go full investment, but this is good to know because that is that is where I want to get. I mean, I don't know if I'll get to, you know, 16 speakers like you have, but I want to do that. <laughs> you know, I, I want to go all out and that's that's sort of what I'm waiting for and and saving for right now. So yeah. I'll have to hit you up when I get there, but it is exciting that that's the kind of cool thing about the audio is like visually you're sort of, you're sort of limited, you know, like you get mm-hmm. a good, if you get the higher end TV, that's, you know, they're all kind of dime a dozen and there's some cool stuff coming out like the right. QLED and mini LED and things like that. It's the tech is getting better, but you're sort of, I feel like the, the audio thing is where you can do so much and just kind of go nuts. And I'm so ready to do that at some point. So it's very, it's very exciting. Cause I'm like, I've got my OLED yeah. TV too. I'm like, this is how much better can I really get? You know, this looks fantastic, but I do feel sometimes, yeah, the audio is lacking. And that is, like I said, super fortunate to have what I have. So I don't want to come off like some <laughs> j- jackass who's like, I only have seven speakers and I need 15, but it's right. great for what I have. But I, yeah, there's more you can do. It's kind of cool that the whole audio world is so, I guess it's like never ending. I mean, you must know there's always something you can upgrade. There's always something you can swap out. Like it's a oh, cool yeah. place to be. Yeah. The, the, at least right now, one of the pinnacles of, uh, home theater receivers, or in this case, it's a preamp because it doesn't have any amps inside of it is the Trinoff, um, Trinoff altitude series. Okay. But, <laughs> Um, they cost I was at, gonna least, say. at least 18 grand. <laughs> oh so my God. That is, I mean, just the fact that it costs as much as a car. Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. That but at the wild. same time, it is so customizable and they have their own room correction, which is just, 
apparently. I mean, I don't, I don't have a trend off, but apparently it's <laughs> no. You, know, you don't have eighteen thousand sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you would think I would, but <laughs> <laughs> just for just for a, you know a receiver. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I'll I'll get one tomorrow. Just, yeah, pull it just, pull it out of the retirement fund, man. Go for mm-hmm. it. My <laughs> wife would love that. <laughs> wow, yeah, that is nuts, so, though. But you know, I mean, those it, things they'll come down, though. Like that always, you know, the high end stuff is always ridiculous. Like, look at the first four K TVs back in. The, I mean, you could drop literally twenty thousand dollars on one that you can now get for fifteen hundred. It's it's the yeah. same. You know, it's even better than what that was. So. You know, the stuff eventually comes around as it gets, you know, cheaper to make. They figure things out. Technology mm-hmm. gets better. So hopefully it'll come around. But 18000 boy, yeah. that's like, I got to, you got to really be, that's, I think I'd have to be like doing this. That would have to be my job. Like I'd have right. to be like some Hollywood audio engineer to go to that level. <laughs> that's yeah. wild. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of F U money. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's that's what's in Martin Scorsese's home theater. Is, <laughs> Probably. Because he just said, I don't care, get the most, you know, get the best. That's right. right. That's wild. Um yeah. I did want to ask one one last thing before I let you go, and this does come back to budget. I think this would be fun, but like, you know, if say you've got somebody who's you know, low tier, mid tier, high tier. So I don't know how you want to classify it, but like, you know, your lower tier audio stuff is like your, your kind of the brands that everybody knows in electronics, right? It's going to be like Samsung, Sony, LG, um, Polk, like things like that. Your mid tier probably gets into like that SVS range, I would think, and some things Mm -hmm. like that. And then your high, high tier, somebody who does have the FU money, Um, you know, where, who who's the brand that you'd look for in each of those that really stands out that somebody should should go after that that you really like in each of those tiers for you know thinking home theater speakers well um yeah budget tier um klipsch still i mean it, they they're yeah. probably the most well known um because even before i got into home theater i knew the name klipsch so whoever's in their marketing department is doing a really good job because, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that name is everywhere. And, yeah. you know, just the look of them, those, those copper woofers and stuff is just so, so signature of them. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like they're, they have probably the most decent budget friendly speakers out there. Um, but although uh, Yamo, J-A-M-O, Yamo is another one which they are actually owned by Klipsch. Okay. Um, so yeah, Klipsch and Yamo probably have some really, yeah, they've got some really decent speakers. Um, Monoprice Monolith, the, they also have very budget-friendly speakers, um, especially subwoofers. The, the Monolith subwoofers are really good huh. uh, for, for, what, for the price that they are. Um, I know them for their cables mostly, but I didn't really, they have great cables too for the price. They do. Yeah. Very high exactly. quality. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that they had the you know, <laughs> solid speakers and subs too. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've got, they've got a lot going on for them uh, for really good prices. And I, I don't know how yeah. to do it. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I just reviewed, um, I just reviewed the RSL speed woofer 12 S um, for the acoustics channel, uh, I, I'm doing a, a little bit of content for them, mm-hmm. but uh, but man, it's a $799 subwoofer, uh, which you know it's not like the cheapest thing out there, but for what it does, holy cow, it is amazing. Um, hmm. so yeah, it's, I would definitely recommend the RS, the Speedwoofer 12 S if you can, if you have the budget to spend $800 on a subwoofer, cause man, it gets deep and it, I was very impressed with what it could do for just that much money. Yeah. That's um, not bad for a subwoofer cause they, they'll get yeah. you over a thousand dollars pretty quick. Right. Cause even, even the SVS, um, 
1000 Pro, um, that is also $799. Yeah. That's, I was just, I was just pulling that up. That is, yeah. And then if you go any higher than that, you're, you're 900 to 1100 and higher, you know, it's over a thousand dollars. So that's not bad. Yeah. 800 is pretty, yeah. That's reasonable if it does a good job. Right. And, uh, yeah, cause I think the, there's a monoprice monolith subwoofer also in that kind of 799 area, uh, in that price range, uh, which is also very good. Um, so yeah, Yamo, Klipsch, Monoprice, Monolith. Um, those are good budget tiers. Um, let's see. And and speaking of RSL, I mean, not, not only do they have the speed woofer, uh, but they also have some really good budget speakers too. Um, so that's another budget friendly product or, or company I would recommend is RSL. Cool. Um, I guess as far as mid-tier, um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Aper- Aperion Audio, they have hooked me up so generously, but they've got, they have a, a lower tier. I would still consider it mid-tier though, just because of the price point. Yeah. Um, their, their Novus line, um, they're, they're really good speakers for what they're worth. Um, but then on above that, their Varus line is a step above that and sound quality is just top notch. Um, and then they've got the theatrus line, which is just bonkers if you have that much to spend. But even then, I mean, it, even their theatrus line, which is, you know, they call it theatrus because it is made to be in a theater. Even then, it's not like super duper high end expensive, you know? Um, I think, what are we talking here? Like a few thousand dollars? Yeah, I think the T80 is a like a two thousand bucks. I can't remember, but uh, but yeah, considering what it can do and the sound quality that it can produce and the amount of watts that it can handle, it's actually a really good deal. Um, so yeah, Aperion Audio SVS for sure. Um, they they do have I, I would recommend most of their mid-tier stuff like the the prime pinnacle and the ultra um, but even their prime satellites are mm-hmm. very good and those are more budget friendly their yep. prime satellite stuff is it, even though the size of the speaker is small they still pack a wallop um, yeah that's what i ended size. up using for surrounds is i've got the the towers up front, the big beefy center speaker. And then, mm-hmm. um, I use the satellites as the, the surrounds that sort of bookshelf speaker. But yeah, I mean, they, for my space, that's all I really need right now. And they work, they work really well. And their elevation stuff, of course, for, if you want to go heights is, I think a very good option. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those, those elevations are like, they're like one of the most versatile speakers on the market right. today. Yeah, because you could just so, use them as a surround. I mean, you could use them yeah. as a bookshelf. I mean, you could put them anywhere, which is really right. neat. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, let's see. M- mid-tier, pro- probably Focal is another good mid-tier product. Um, they're made in France. Um, so they are, they're probably a little more expensive compared mm-hmm. to other mid-tier companies that I've already listed. Um, but yeah, they've got a really good product. Focal actually makes some really good headphones too, if you're in the market for headphones. Um, their uh, headphones, what is it? The the Clear MG and the Batis, uh, B-A-T-H-Y-S, Batis. Those headphones are amazing and i think they're like 250 dollars or something so oh, not the cheapest not headphones but no nah, but i mean like that's cheaper grand, than airpods you know? yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so i mean if you can get them on a good deal i would definitely yeah. go for those that's not but, bad uh, um gosh yeah that's that's really all that's coming to mind right now um yeah well who's you got the fu money where are you going 
<laughs> where, where, where are we going for our fifty thousand um, dollar, you know, home theater system? I would go with. Uh, well, if you're in Australia, Cricks is huge in Australia. Cricks, that's like uh, the most Australian brand name. I know, right? <laughs> Get yourself a couple of Cricks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have a fantastic home theater. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, Cricks is really good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they are only in Australia. I don't know. I don't know if oh, you can get Cricks in the States. Uh, but uh, per listen, per listen is a, v- oh man, I that might be one of my like end game home theater systems <laughs> is if every single yeah. one of my speakers was per listen. Because uh, they, man, they, they really know what they're doing. Um, uh, although I want, I actually haven't heard them in person, but I am very drawn to a company called golden ear. It's all one word golden ear. Um, they, they got some pretty expensive stuff going on, but they've also got some very unique technology that runs their speakers. Hmm. Um, even, even small speakers, can have really big sound with their stuff. Um, so I, I am in the process of trying to get in touch with them or maybe through a third party, try and get a hold of some golden ear speakers. But uh, yeah, look them up because they, they've got some really fantastic, very unique designs yeah. as well. Cool. Yeah. What is that? What are we talking there for price? Um. Yeah, like thousands of dollars per. Um, I mean, honestly, that I would, I would maybe per speaker. Even, yeah, I would maybe even say that's kind of lower tier fu money. <laughs> yeah, um, just because it's not stupid money, right? You know. Uh, but although yeah, speaking I mean, of speaking of Focal, Focal does make some extremely expensive tower speakers as well. Mm. Um, but those I would probably reserve for, you know, more like stereo, like hi-fi stereo system. Yeah, right. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, yeah. if I ever get the FU money, <laughs> I'll know who to come to. Um, but hey, I know who to come to anyway when I go and do this full this full transformation in a few years. I'll definitely be <laughs> – I'll have lots and lots of questions. I really – when I think about it, I'm like, I think I really want to save my money and like get somebody to do it to who like knows, mm. you know, what they're doing, like install this thing. So I don't have to worry about it and screw something up because right. I really want to just like do it and be like, okay, I'm good for, you know, a good while, even though I know that won't be true because some technology will change and I'll want to swap things out because that's just the way things go in this world. But, right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that and I will of course make sure to ask you and get your your assistance and watch your reviews because you get tons of stuff so you know where where can people find you on youtube and where you know or anywhere else social media where can they connect with you if they want to catch up on all the latest uh yeah uh youtube.com slash at elon osborne e-a-l-a-n-o-s-b-o-r-n-e uh same thing with uh instagram at Elon Osborne, mm-hmm. Twitter at Elon Osborne. Um, although I'm definitely on Instagram the most. Um, Not a bad I, idea these days. <laughs> yeah, I have yet to get into TikTok. I don't. I, I'm still not sure if I'm going to do that or not. But mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. Facebook. Eh. I mean, I, I have a Facebook page, but. I really don't do much on Facebook nowadays. Yeah. It's yeah, it's mainly Instagram if you're going to follow me okay. on something other than YouTube. Um because uh I definitely do, you know, lots of Instagram stories, kind of yeah. behind the scenes stuff or just random stuff that I might come across and want to share with with my audience. For sure. Um yeah, but also some All right. reels from time to time, etc. Oh yeah. Got to do the short form stuff, right? Everybody wants the short form and the long form. I struggle with that too. I'm like, 
I just want to do the long form, but <laughs> I know. I, I, you know, I guess people want these short snippets too, so I'll do it. And then some people are like, I hate your short snippets, only do long <laughs> stuff. And some people are like, I won't watch your long stuff, it's too long. I'm like, all right, I don't know. I uh, guess I'll just do them both and you guys can fight it out. But yeah, I, I hear you. Instagram can't is, please everyone. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. If you try to, you go crazy. But yeah, yeah. Instagram, I think that's that's pretty much my main spot too at this point. Seems like a, a safe bet there. So yeah, yeah I'll put um so. I'll put all the links and definitely, you know, you guys make sure you go check it out on YouTube. If you have any interest at all, you want to learn the audio stuff. This is where I go. So if you trust me, <laughs> you go here. You go to Elon's channel and, and check it out because it's good stuff. So just, yeah, thank you for coming on. This was, I learned a ton, which is literally the reason I do this, I think, is so that I can learn and then I just get to record it and let other people learn with me. But I learned, <laughs> right. I learned a ton. So this was, this was awesome. I appreciate you taking the time and I'm definitely looking forward to what you got coming next. Hopefully there's a lot more, uh, you get some more partnerships and get in touch with some more people and, and review yeah. some more stuff. Cause that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. Things are in the works. I, I, it's not a done deal, but I am possibly getting my first sponsorship soon. Nice. Um, so that, that'll be a game changer. Cause that's what any YouTuber, you know, wants to get to eventually. So yeah. Yeah. No shame yeah. in that. Right. I mean, we spend all this time. I, I, I've, you know, we're all just trying to do the best for our families too. So mm -hmm. absolutely no shame in that. I mean, good for you. Congrats on that. Hopefully it comes through and works out. Yeah. Cause right, those I'm are excited. nice. Those they're, they're few and far between sometimes. And you got to be careful. There's a lot of scam ones out there too. So the oh, emails sure. I get on a daily <laughs> basis, I'm like, Oh yeah, d you definitely want to sponsor me. Like it's literally from like, hi, I'm Bob Smith, CEO of like Sony. And I'm like, yeah, of course you are uh -huh. like for sure. <laughs> then they ask you for, you know, they send you a zip file and go, Hey, here's the sponsorship. Yes. hundred percent. I believe that. Yeah. So be yeah, careful of that. On that real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you know better, but my it's, it's nice when you get a legit one because they are few and far between and it does help a lot. So yeah, that's awesome. So congrats. And Thank we'll you. send a bunch of people your way to watch this stuff. So I, I appreciate Thank the time you. and and you're doing great work. So keep it up so I can keep learning and figuring out what I want to do in five years down the road. And I'll stay yeah. up to date on all this stuff with your channel. I'll be here. Uh, I'll, I'll, all be, right. I'll be waiting for all your questions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thanks again. All right, everybody. That's our interview with Elon. He was an awesome guest. I hope you learned a lot. I know that I learned a lot, like a whole ton. I have a whole new appreciation for home theater audio and you know the fact that i got a long way to go even with my own home theater setup and lots of things i can do to you know keep improving the audio quality and just take my setup to the next level and i just loved talking to him i could have talked to him for hours and in fact after we stopped recording i think we talked for like another you know hour anyway um just about youtube and other things he's just a great guy so go support his channel seriously Thirty thousand subscribers this guy deserves way way more i mean he has excellent content it's high quality stuff it's so informative so if if you're at all interested and you want to set up home theater audio you want to get you know anything reviews on speakers sound bars av receivers you know amplifiers you name it he's got all that content on his channel and he is far more knowledgeable than I am on that stuff and is clearly the expert that I look to. And I would say he's the expert you should look to as well for that type of content. So go check him out, support him, subscribe. If you're interested in that stuff, let's, you know, bump his channel up a bit cause he deserves it. Um, but yeah, on my side, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube to my channel. If you want the latest from the podcast, so you never miss an episode. And if you are listening on Spotify or Apple, wherever you're at, if you leave us a five-star review, when you're enjoying the episodes, that helps a ton to get us more listeners, more uh, viewership. It's really, really helpful. I see we did cross 155 star reviews on Spotify, which was super cool. So thank you all for the support. And of course, as always, social media links will be down in the description, ways you can connect with me. And I'll have plenty of review videos and other content on my YouTube channel to check that out as well. So thank you all. Thank you to Elon. You're going to hear his voice here again in a second on the outro if you're on the audio side. So thank you all. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Coming soon.
Be sure to subscribe to the Films at Home podcast using your favorite app so you don't miss another episode. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review this podcast, which helps us out tremendously. You can also help support us by watching our short-form content over on YouTube and TikTok by searching Films at Home. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at films underscore at underscore home. The intro and outro were created by Elon Osborne. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.